Hey friends, it's Brian here, and it's time for another video in my Jeep TJ build series. So, a little introduction. This started off as a salvage Jeep that I bought at Copart, because I just, I wanted to customize the Jeep, and I didn't see any point in paying stupid amounts of money for one, and then tearing it up. So, uh, if you find this video interesting, please remember to hit that like button. Um, if you want to see more of my videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you find out when I release new videos. And be sure to check out my Jeep build playlist because that's where all the videos about this build are located. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put the front drive shaft back in. I ran into a little snafu. I ordered new power steering hoses. These are probably 18 years old. Uh, but I ordered 2002 Jeep TJ power steering hoses and they don't fit this Jeep. Oops. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. Maybe I thought I was going to change the gearbox. So anyway, um, I'm waiting on those to come in. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and put the front drive shaft in. Uh, hopefully this will not be a big pain in the ass. I was going to wait and do that later, but I'm going to do it today. So that's what we're going to get busy with. So I will see you all under the Jeep. Let me get set up for that and we'll be right back. All right, folks, so let's uh, let me get my camera set up here and get some light on this. So one of the things that's super important is to label the parts, front drive shaft, rear bolts. They go back here. It just makes life much easier when everything's labeled. All right, and that's in neutral, so that'll make that more pleasant. All right, so one of the things I did is I put index marks uh, they're probably hard to see here, so I used some white nail polish so that I could index the um, parts. So these come in from the back. It's gonna make these particularly a pain in the ass. Um, I need to go look a spec up before I start in on this. Uh, one, two, three. Where is number four? Oh, okay. Well, that's gonna suck. I'm missing a bolt. I mean, shit gonna happen without that. Let's see if it got put in the wrong one. It did. Alright, so I'm going to go look up the torque spec uh, and um, I'll be right back. Okay, so um, the torque settings are really low. These go in first, loosely. Uh, it's like 14 foot-pounds and 20 foot-pounds, so I'm gonna put medium thread locker on these. Thank you. 
uh, added duct tape to this so that I wouldn't lose anything while it was out. So we're going to have some variants here in the front. Let me go ahead and get the back loosely installed. Let's see if I can find a uh, box ratchet or a box wrench that's a ratchet. I'll be right back. It's 5 sixteenths. This is the size.
So if you hold one finger on the ratcheting piece and you can twist the bolt with the rest of the wrench and it will work it in. Uh, it's a little hard to do this when the bolt head faces away from you and you, you can't actually see it. That one's not even in. So we'll to figure out which way lines up with what. All right, there's our mark. what I was trying to stop earlier with the duct tape is keeping the needle bearings from falling out. So I'm going to need some more um, lift and the only way that I see this working is to 
um, lift. I, I need to drop the suspension back a little bit. So it needs to go that way. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to let this hang down. And reposition my deck. Now I'm going to find some place to pick the Jeep up that I can reach with the jack. I don't think I can reach the frame up here, but we'll see. I'm going to try. Nope. Alright, let me see if I can reach it from the side. gonna go let's see if that got me what I needed I only need a very small amount of additional play here I don't think that's gonna do it Well, that's frustrating. More backlash than I'd like. Um, only thing I can think of is to get the big jack out. So, let me... So I used to own a Jeep and I thought for sure that I owned a high lift jack and sure enough I did but I don't trust that thing any farther I can throw it and that just drug the whole axle closer not further away so we still have an alignment issue let me see if I can figure out how to solve it huh interesting all right okay so what I've done is I've lowered it all the way down and I have uh, turned the wheel the other way in hopes that that will stretch just the little bit that I need. I just need a quarter of an inch. And it's not happening. I don't understand. I mean, there should be more than enough play here 
to get this axle back in. The only thing I can think of is maybe somehow I brought this closer. I don't even begin to understand how that thing works. All right, let me go do some research on the internets and see what the hell is going on here because it doesn't want to fit. And, you know, I expected this would be a pain in the ass. So I'm going to set it up here. And then I'm going to go do some research and I will be back. It's not going to sit up there, so I'm going to let it just hang. It's not going to hurt it. Not good for it, but it won't hurt it. All right, it's the hokey pokey. Um, so, as you guys know, this Jeep had frame damage, and I took it to a Mexican body shop. That's not a slur. I wanted a Mexican repair done to it. And what I mean by that is I wanted it fixed the way it would be fixed in Central America or Mexico because that's good enough for a Jeep, trail Jeep and none of the American shops would touch it for a variety of reasons, namely that they couldn't do the other all the other work to it. I just wanted the frame pulled out. I didn't want to make anybody rich. So I know that the driver's side frame isn't perfect. I've welded some reinforcements to it, um, but it looks like it's about an inch that way more than it's supposed to be. And all things being equal, I don't think that's a big deal. Um, there's a tremendous amount of variability in these suspensions, and I've seen enough shit in the last 18 months that ain't gonna make a difference. Um, but I think the control arms need to be replaced with adjustable control arms so I can push this axle forward a little bit. And uh, I think I'm out by like a quarter to a half an inch. And I think that's actually part of the problem. And I knew when I bought this that I needed adjustable control arms. So, moral of the story is I'm going to take the drive shaft back out. <laughs> and fuck it, I've only wasted a couple hours. But whatever. Um... And, and, you know, I don't know why this is bent. I should not have creases in my exhaust pipe, but whatever. I've got creases there, too. Um, so, what I want to do at this point is take the drive shaft back out, put it on the shelf, and I will deal with this later when I get around to this. I told myself that I wasn't going to spend the $800 on a full set of adjustable control arms until... I had um, uh, gotten this thing licensed on the road. So, I'm going to take the drive shaft back out. And that's the reason. So, let's go back over here because that's where this action is going to be. And where the hell did it go? Oh, it's underneath the light. So, the good news is I'm getting better at this and this won't take as long as it took to get it up here. we want it to go.
and there's possibility that the solution to this problem might be to shorten the drive shaft. But before we go there, I wanna I wanna rule out suspension problems. point it's loose. Alright. 
So let me put everything up and uh, move on to my next project for today.